Mm, thank you. I'm super excited to be here. It's my first Moodle Mood, global Moodle Mood ever, uh, and I've never given a presentation to so many people. So thank you for coming to my presentation. Uh, I hope you won't leave disappointed. Uh, my name is Greg, and today I'm going to talk to you about how I ended up using a Moodle site as a professional portfolio. Uh, now, before I start, before we dive in, I just want to explain that in the context of this presentation, portfolio is understood as a tool that I use to showcase my work to other people. It's not a student portfolio solution like Mahara, for example. It's a tool that I use just to showcase my work. Uh, okay, so let's dive in. Now, I wasn't sure if there was going to be internet here, and I think the presenter's guide explicitly said that not to rely on internet. So if you are connected, you can navigate to this URL. It's a very simple one, moodleportfolio.com. And you can use these uh, guest credentials to log in. Uh, if you're not online right now, you can use these credentials uh, after the conference. I'm going to keep this account active for the duration of this um, uh, present, uh, conference. And then so you can uh, dive in, you can look around. And if you have any questions, and hopefully whatever I'm going to explain during this presentation is going to make sense. Uh, and obviously, you can always mail me after the conference with questions, etc. So, uh, how did I come up with this idea? About two years ago, I was between jobs, and I realized I needed a professional portfolio. A lot of jobs for ed techs, pre and post COVID, now require uh, require you to have a portfolio. In other words, uh, people want to see your work, and you want to see what you've been working on. And I realized that I didn't have one. And I was actually surprised that I could uh, get away without having a portfolio for such a long time. So I started looking online for portfolio solutions. And the more I searched online, the more confusing the whole experience became. Once my browser got enough cookies to realize I was looking for a portfolio solution, I was just bombarded with advertisements from kind of generic website builders. And also at this stage, I noticed that people tend to use these generic website builders, the likes of Wix and WordPress to build their portfolios, but they're essentially websites uh, and they're more tailored for photographers, videographers, and, and creatives. So I couldn't find anything specifically tailored for education. Uh, at that stage, I knew that I wanted something that is open source, so it gives me complete control over my portfolio, uh, that is more obviously tailored for education, and something that I'm already f familiar with, so I don't have to spend time uh, uh, learning a new technology or a new tool. And then I had that kind of eureka moment when I realized, well, you know, I've got so much experience with Moodle. I've been working with Moodle for the last 10 years, started using it since version 2.4. Uh, why not using a Moodle as a portfolio site? And then that was it. That was the idea. And then next I, I had to spend some time actually thinking how I was, was going to build my portfolio. So. I thought I would tell you a little bit about my journey to my own Moodle site, and uh, you know, once I decided to use my have my own Moodle site, I uh, didn't really know what to do. I have experience building courses, online courses, fully online courses, blended learning courses, building course components, and training people to use Moodle. But I never had to do administration. I never had to install a Moodle instance. Never had to upgrade it. Never did any of the admin stuff. So I didn't really know. I got stuck. Didn't really know what to do. And obviously, Moodle Cloud came to the rescue. And uh, I was able to set up a Moodle site in, in minutes, literally. So once I had that, I had my own Moodle site, then I started diving deeper and uh, started thinking how I was actually using, uh, how I was, I was going to use Moodle uh, to build a portfolio. Uh, one after, a little bit after that, when I realized that I needed more control, and uh, I don't know, maybe I, I'm a, a little bit of a control freak, uh, so I just realized that Moodle clouds, um, wasn't really a perfect solution for me because I needed to install a theme and I needed to install plugins, theme components, and had just greater control over my uh, Moodle site. So I started working with a Moodle hosting company. Uh, there is a network of Moodle partners, and depending on your geographical location, I'm sure you will be able to find a partner and uh, they will be able to offer you a good deal on hosting. And the, uh, I'm not going to mention the name. I use the company that's pretty well known, and they have expertise in Moodle hosting. And as part of the deal, they uh, agreed to install a theme that I really liked and I really needed. Uh, so I had that. And once I had the theme, then I could start actually building a portfolio and thinking how I'm actually going to use these uh, Moodle elements, uh, Moodle site elements, to develop my portfolio, which I'm going to talk about next. Um, so, and ultimately. After a while, after a couple of months, I realized, well, I really need 
a, a, a self-hosted Moodle site to be completely in control, uh, to be able to uninstall, install different themes, to be able to install theme components, uh, etc. So I just bought um, uh, just website hosting and I worked with a hosting provider that actually had uh, Moodle expertise. Uh, and I installed my own, well, they installed Moodle for me and, and uh, this is where I am now, uh, at now. So this is just, a, I thought I would mention this journey I went through uh, from Moodle Cloud to having my own uh, Moodle site. Now, you probably, if you're thinking about doing the same, you can, but you can probably also identify a solution that works for you and go straight for that. I just thought it would be a good idea just to uh, tell you about my experience and the rationale why I ended up with, uh, with the self-hosted Moodle site, given the fact that it's costing me money, so um, I had to justify it somehow. So moving on. Now, these are the site elements and uh, components that I'm kind of leveraging and using as part of my portfolio. Uh, once I started working on a theme, and this is, I think, the theme is one of the most important part of your portfolio. Uh, there are a lot of themes out there. Uh, some of them are free, some of them are paid. Uh, some of them have amazing features that you can, you can use in your portfolio. Whether you are going to spend money on it, uh, on a theme, or whether you're going to get a free theme, that's really up to you. Uh, a pro tip, if you find a theme that you like, I, I, there's a lot of uh, premium uh, Moodle themes, and if it's going to cost you money, wait until the Christmas, because usually, and this is what I do with most of my software purchases, usually uh, over Christmas you get 50% discounts and Black Friday deals and, and stuff like that. So uh, this is what I did, and I managed to, to buy a, a pretty good theme for, uh, for, for at a 50% discount. Okay, so that's it. Now then, w once I started uh, digging deeper into themes, I, I noticed that a lot of themes allow you to build your own homepage, and this homepage will become kind of like a storefront for your portfolio. So if you look at my portfolio, my homepage ha has a, a little introduction. It has, I, I boast my badges, my Moodle uh, badges there as well. I put uh, a little uh, explanation of what the por portfolio includes, and there's an important overview section which is telling you what uh, projects I've been working on. And I usually use this kind of storefront of my Moodle portfolio just to show it to people who are interested in working with me, uh, but, um, and then I give them access uh, later on if, they, if, they, if, if they're interested. And then obviously I use a dashboard to showcase all, all of these projects and also a course page for, for these projects uh, to, to, to showcase them. Now I developed a template that uh, is consistent, so I present all the projects consistently so it's easy to navigate. And finally, the, uh, the roles and permissions. Now I'm not going to go into too much detail about this, uh, we only have two minutes left. Um, I'm using a custom student role to give people access to my portfolio, but I did have to go into roles and permissions and change a few things because I want everybody to have the same experience. So, for example, just an example, I prevented people from uh, students <coughs> or people accessing my portfolio from changing anything, the adding blocks on course page or dashboard, etc. So, I just wanted to have that consistency. Moving on, also, you will find that very often you will end up curating the content of your portfolio site. Now, once you have it structured and everything, you will have to do some things, and it's, 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 it's a good idea to do some things to beautify your portfolio, to make it stand out, make it pop. And there's a, a number of tools you can use, and this is just a very short list. So Font Awesome is one tool that I use a lot. It's a kind of icon toolkit and, and library. I use these to build buttons, uh, but also to have kind of uh, in nav bars or have a fancy uh, order or, or unordered list with, uh, with icons instead of bullet points, page dividers and things like that. Uh, and these are vector-based, obviously, so they scale very well across devices, uh, etc. I use Lottie files to kind of have some kind of element of animation. I'm a big, I work with video a lot, and in, in the past I know that uh, getting animations onto a, 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 not just Moodle, but web page was sometimes was very clunky. So here we are, you know, uh, lightweight vector-based animations uh, that you can have with literally two lines of code. A bootstrap, obviously, that's one very important uh, component. And there is a bootstrap uh, session tomorrow, actually, by Sam from Catalyst. So I are going to be attending that. That's very useful. You can now easily add bootstrap components. And then a free pick, flat icon, and pixels, the just generic websites for free, graphic, and etc. Okay. So just to sum up, I think 
there are several benefits of having your own portfolio. Just the portfolio itself gives you an opportunity to reflect on your projects, revise them, see what went wrong, improve things if needs be. But because I spend money on my portfolio, I think also it's proven to give me a lot of uh, pr professional opportunities, uh, professional development opportunities. And uh, for example, learning a, lo a little bit of about the backend uh, site administration roles of permissions. I never had to do that. Um, also, finally an excuse to skill up on HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, and graphic and general web design. Okay, so that's it for me. Thank you. I went a little bit over time. <laughs> and, uh, and here is a, a little Lottie animation for you, so I enjoy that. So, was there anything about setting up your own Moodle site that you found particularly difficult? Uh, not really, no. Maybe plugin installation. Sometimes I, have, I get these dependencies errors, and that can be a little bit confusing. Again, I, I know now what dependencies are, and, and sometimes, especially with themes, there are different components that you have to uh, install first. Uh, but, you know, it was a learning curve for me, so... But I think, I in general, uh, installing things uh, is fairly easy, you know. So, yeah, thank you. Hello. Um, I was wondering how long did it take to develop this portfolio? <laughs> yeah, I was expecting that question, so... Um, like I said, it was a journey for me. So from, from Moodle Cloud, my first Moodle Cloud site to my self-hosted site, uh, it was about a month. A month, but that's just because I was figuring out really what I wanted to have, whether I wanted to have a Moodle Cloud, uh, whether I wanted to work with an e-learning partner or go for self-hosted. But once I had everything set up, I would say uh, to configure all the roles of permissions, to put a few projects in, to figure out what activities and resources within a course page I'm going to use because there's a huge choice, and this is what makes Moodle stand out. You can use the file activity, you can use pages within to showcase your work. To put in six projects took me maybe two weeks. Yeah, and ju just if you if you're on, on my course page, if you scroll all the way down or at the dashboard or the home page, there is a footer there that has links, images, icons to all of the things that power my portfolio. So if you're interested in learning more, you can go that. I know I'm using images as links, and if Gavin, if you're here and you're watching this, I'm really sorry, I'll work on that. I'll make it more accessible. <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs>